Facebook. Hey there! Thanks for joining us at Discovery Church Online. This week, our senior pastor, Jason Hannish, is teaching us how to do relationships and intimacy God's way. All right, uh, let me jump into our series here. I know you guys have been looking forward to this one, part three of As Long As We Will Shall Live. You got your pen ready, like, come on, pastor. Talk to me. Preach to me, pastor. I'm ready. All right, let me give you the theme verse for As Long As We Both Shall Live, this series, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 7. Love never gives up. Love never loses faith, is always hopeful, and endures through every circumstance. See, this kind of love is not a love that you and I have of our own ability. This kind of love, and as long as you both shall live kind of love, the the, the love that never gives up, that never loses faith, the always hopeful kind of love, the enduring through every trial, difficulty, um, downsizing, uh, through every circumstance, is an agape love. It's it's a love that that does not come and cannot come from our own human ability. We need the Spirit of God to have in as long as we both shall live kind of love. And so we asked this question at the beginning of the series. It's a good question. And that question was, are great marriages possible? Are great marriages possible? And I believe we have a screen slide for that if you want to follow along with me, guys. Are great marriages possible? Some people kind of think that they're not possible. They're They've already like, you know what? No, marriage is full of compromise and, and issues. And, you know, you just got to figure it out. You got to work it out. I mean, you, okay, you, I'll let you do that and I'll do this. Then I need to do this if you're going to, if you're going to do that. No marriage really is great. I mean, at least not like that, like that scripture. No marriage is like that. I mean, even you, Pastor Jason, you don't have a, one of those kind of marriages, but can I tell you that God has a plan for your marriage? He has a plan for a great marriage marriage. It is possible for you to have a powerful, as long as you both shall live kind of marriage, but it's just not probable. It's not. The statistics are stacked against us. The odds are you have a 50-50 chance, especially if you do what most people do, and all you say, which most Christians do, and that is do it the world's way. If you do it the world's way, you have a 50-50 shot. But God has, God has a better way. Can I get a better amen? So you can have this great relationship, but you're going to have to follow God's way. And I believe that God's way, listen, you guys, God's way is not burdensome. He's not a fuddy-duddy trying to steal all your, your fun, okay? God's way works. Listen, God's way is not just right. It's better. Can, can you say that with me? God's way is not just right. It's it's better, you guys, and I hope I'm, I, I can convince you, and the Spirit of God can convince you of that. So here's what we need to do. We're going to make five commitments. We're going to make a commitment to five things. If our marriage is going to become this, as long as we both, sh- both shall live kind of marriage, then we need to make five commitments. And the five commitments are the actual five, the titles of the five sermons in this series. I'm going to give them to you every week because I want to just... Man, I want to just drill this inside of you. I'm believing that God is going to restore and reignite marriages in this season and relationships. So let me give them to you again. Part one, number one, the first commitment that we're asking you to make is to seek God. Seek God because great relationships are God-first relationships. We talked about that in part one. If, If you haven't seen that, if you weren't here, go watch it online. We archive all of our messages on the website Go check that out. Our Northwest Campus pastor preached last week on the second commitment, which was to fight fair. Fight fair. So we're all going to have conflict. We're all going to have fights. Veronica and I fight, okay? But there's there's a right way to do it, and there's a wrong way to do it. And the Bible shares has a lot of wisdom on how to fight fair. This week, we're going to talk about how to have fun, and that's a hidden title right there because we're going to talk about the romance side of message. We're going to talk about sex today. And so I I am, uh, this is, if you're new to Discovery, this ain't not new to Discovery people. We talk about this very openly and in the biblical, you know, perspective of sex. But if you are new and and you didn't know what you were coming into today and you got your kids with you that are fifth grade or under, I would just encourage you to take advantage of Discovery Kids and, and that's it. That's the only warning you get. It's, it's fair game now. We're on. Here's next week. The fourth commitment is we're going to talk about how to stay pure. 
how to stay pure. Don't miss that installment, you guys, because the world's way, listen, the world's way is becoming increasingly, increasingly perverted and messed up and toxic. And if you buy into the world's way, I'm telling you, it'll ruin your marriage. It'll ruin it. Um, so uh, listen, I, I like to say the problem isn't having a sex drive. The problem is letting sex drive. Come on, somebody. Some of you singles need to hear that, okay? The problem isn't that you have a sex drive. The problem is letting sex drive. We're going to have some fun today, man. We're, here, here's the last one. We're going to talk about uh, the, fall, the last week, the last one. We're going to make the commitment to never give up. You know, to have that as long as we both shall live. So we're going to talk about how to have endurance, how to endure to the very end with our marriage and our relationship. So today, uh, we're going to talk about how to have fun. But I want to start by giving you some, some principles on how to create what, what I like to call a life-giving environment in your marriage and in your home. Like, it's, it's one thing to have principles and practices and some habits, and we're going to get to the practical side of the message, and we always have some practical tools, some tools for you to apply. It's one thing to, to have tools, but it's another thing for your marriage to have, like, life in it, where there's just this breath of fresh air. There's just, there's just some, like, it, so it's, it, it's so, it can be like work and duty, and I got to do this, and I got to do this, if you just have tools, but when you have life. Man, and that's what we try to even, at Discovery Church, we, we have what we call a life-giving culture. So yes, we have programs and departments and tools and processes and things like that and systems, but, but that's not what attracts you, anyone to Discovery. What attracts you to Discovery is that there's life here. And you guys say, wow, there's, that's why you have people traveling from Santa Clarita every week, Visalia every week to come here because there's a breath of fresh air. That word breath is the word spirit. And that's the literal words. The, sp- the spirit is here. There is life in this place. Let me show you this powerful verse, because if you are going to have uh, a fun in your marriage, and if you're going to apply any of these commitments, it's just so much easier if it's a life-giving environment. It's just easier. Your marriage is easier if you have a life-giving environment in your home and in your marriage. Deuteronomy chapter 30, our first verse there, second verse actually. This day, I call the heavens and the earth as witnesses against you. That, right here in front of you, you have a choice. Life or death, blessings or curses. So this isn't happenstance. See, your marriage isn't going to make it just by chance. No, you get to choose if your marriage makes it or not. You get to choose if it's full of life or it's full of death, if there's blessings or curses. And then look at the next words. He says, now choose life. And I want to encourage you to do that today, to choose life. And we're going to get to the practical side of the message in just a moment. I'll show you how to have fun. But before that is that you have to choose how to have a life-giving, choose to have a life-giving environment that honestly fun happens a whole lot better in. And I'll give you those principles in just a minute. And, And when you choose that though, look, so that you and your children may live. So in other words, when you make these life giving choices, it affects all your other relationships as well. It affects your family. And that you may love the Lord your God, listen to his voice, hold fast to him. For, and this is going to be our first point in just a moment, for the Lord is that source of life. See, the Lord is that breath of fresh air. The Lord is that life-giving spirit. He's the one I need to connect with. So I want to give you three life-giving principles that need to be the bedrock of your marriage, that, that need to be the foundation of your marriage, that every commitment, tool, and practice is built Upon. If you're taking notes with me, jot them down. Number one, life-giving relationships. Look to God as the source of their life. Life-giving relationships. Look to God as the source of their life. That's what they do. In other words, I'm not going to put pressure on another person to make me happy. And I, Are you ready for this, you guys? A lot of us are doing that. We're doing just that. We're putting all this pressure on a person to meet all of my needs and to make me happy. A while ago, someone asked me, does Veronica make you happy? I said, not all the time. <laughs> and I, I'm going to get in trouble for that. But then, I mean, I'm honest. Like, it does, it, not all the time. I was, honestly, I was happy before I got married. I don't, okay, now we're happy together. We have a great marriage. We're happy together. But, but she is not the source of my happiness. She is not the source of, of that. And a lot of people, they, I think they just, they're like, oh, no, my, I'm, not, I'm just not happy anymore. Why? Oh, because my wife. What do, you, what do you mean a wife? You mean that's, does, does that person determine your joy now? Does that determine 
your happiness. I've told my wife this early in marriage. I told her, listen, honey, I will love you better if I love God first. I will love you better if I love God more. I'll be better. I'll love you. I'll love you. I promise you. And, 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 and for some of you, some of you ladies, maybe even some of you men, if you were honest, because you've watched the shows, maybe you read the books, or maybe you've, you've kind of had this fantasy idea of what marriage should look like, I believe deep down in some marriages, the, the woman wants to be idolized by her husband. She desires to be the object of his affection, to be the source of his need. And you're creating an unhealthy atmosphere in your marriage when you do that. He will love you better if he loves God more, if he loves God first. I, I, I promise you, this is good preaching. Say amen or owe me or something. <laughs> it's just true, though. And uh, what I'm suggesting is that you just let God be the source of your love needs. Don't put all the pressure on a person to make you happy. Let God fill you. Let God fill you. And then, number two, here's the second one. Life-giving relationships happen when two servants are in love. So now that God is the one who has completed me, I don't, I don't look to someone else to complete me. Oh, I need to be completed. So I need to complete. Can I just give the single people some advice here today? It would be so much better if you found your completion in God before you found that person. It would be so much better for you, healthier for you, if God was the one who filled you, if God was the one in the source of your life and completion. So now, now that God has completed me, God is the one who fills me. He's the source of my life. Now, listen to this. Now, this is where Christianity becomes so much fun because I now have supernatural power to be a person that I could never be without him. I, I, I don't know if you came to the Unity Marriage Conference, but Dr. Michael Mania, he's got... He Kingdom Community Ministries, and he's got all these letters before his name, very educated, does the whole married, you know, life, the, you know, that's what he does, that's what he does, and he came up here, and he, and he painted the picture of the woman, and a male and a female, and how different they were, and how their brains work just differently, and, and it's just, we're so different, we have different needs, and different interests, and different, different, all these differences, and he painted this bleak circumstance, and he said, there's just no way you can make this work without Jesus. No way, without the Spirit of God working inside of you. And that's the miracle. You say, Jason, how can I serve this other person? You fall in love with God first. That's how. You fall in love with God first. Do that first point. God becomes the source of your life. Now you're able to be a servant to that person. Now I am. Now, but if I don't, if I'm not getting that from God, if he is not my source, now I need it from somebody else. Now I'm going to look to that person to fill my needs. And guess what? They'll fail you. They won't meet your needs all the time. So your relations are up, they're down. They're up, they're down. They're up, they're down. Why? Not because that person, they're human, just like you. It's because you're not looking to God as the source of your need. That's why. That's why. Now, now if I am getting that, now, now I can actually, because I'm getting my love, my needs, he's the source of my life, now I can look to my spouse and say, I'm here to serve you. And be a servant to my spouse. And I'm telling you, you're going to need that if you, want to, if you want to survive in marriage. You want this great relationship because great relationships don't go, meet my needs, fill my needs. What have you done for me? Great relationships look to one another and say, I'm here to serve you. I'm here to serve you. And you cannot do that unless your needs are being met from God. You'll always look to someone else to meet that place that only God was meant to meet. Life-giving relationships happen when two servants are in love. Here's the third one. Life-giving relationships make the choice every day. It's a choice you got to make every day. And this is where I want to dispel the myth where people say, well, I fell in love, but then after some time, I don't know what happened, Pastor, but I fell out of love. I fell in love, and then I fell out of love. You know, people talk about falling in love like it's a ditch or something. Love is not a ditch that you fall into. Love is not an emotion that you feel. Love is a choice that you make every day. It's a choice. And so, oh, I thought it was just supposed to stay there. No, it doesn't stay there. You got to make that choice every day. So as long as we both shall live, I'm going to let God meet my needs, fill my needs, not a person. Every day, I'm going to serve people, not just serve myself. And then tomorrow, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to make that choice every day. 
And you also, you also have to make the choice. You have to make the choice to have fun in your marriage. This is one of the areas that is so easily overlooked, so commonly overlooked, but it's an area that needs to be. It needs to be. We got to make a commitment to this or else it has some devastating effects on our relationship and, our, and on our intimacy. Let me share with you a few scriptures about this. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 says this, live happily. I love that. Say that with me. Live happily. Do you know God wants you to be happy? Some people think that's unbiblical. That's unbiblical thought. No, no, no. God doesn't want me to be happy. He wants me to be, to be long suffering and suffer and, and be miserable. And no, that's not biblical at all. And, and listen, let me approach this because some of you, some of you, maybe you were raised in a religious atmosphere where maybe you're raised in a church where they should have, they could have had a sign at the door that says no laughing entering here. Or, no fun. Leave your fun at the door. You know what I mean? And, and that's just not God. That is not God. God wants you to have joy unspeakable and full of glory. He wants you to have this internal barometer that has nothing to do with outside, that you live happy, fulfilled, life abundant is what Jesus said. So God says, look at this, live happily with the woman you love through all the meaningless days of life that God has given you under the sun. In other words, there's a lot of days where you just go to work, you come home, you do it again, and it seems all routine, right? There's a lot of days like that, but it's a blessing to live happily with the woman you love. It goes on to say, the word, uh, the wife God gives you, what is she? She, she? she is to be a reward for your earthly toil. Live happily with the wife. She's a reward. The NIV says, enjoy life with your wife with whom you love. In fact, I would say um, that without fun, without adventure, without romance, without physical intimacy, marriage is often reduced to a business partnership. It's just, it's just this, this like a business relationship of two people living under the same roof, but living totally separate lives. And the communication is just simply becomes business. Hey, you go that way and I'll go this way. Hey, you do that and then I'll make sure to do this. You pay for it, pay that and then, and then, and I'll pay this. And what's interesting, you guys, is you didn't fall in love, and I even use that language, you didn't fall in love um, having a bad time, did you? Nobody falls in love having a bad time with someone. You ever hear like a girl say, oh my gosh, you know, this guy, he's awesome. We have nothing in common. <laughs> we just get together, and it, it's, it, we have nothing to say to each other. I mean, sometimes I just watch him play video games, and he veggies out and stuff. It is so boring. He's amazing. Right? That doesn't, that doesn't happen, right? But, but what you do here is like, oh my gosh, we have so much in common and we have so much fun together. And we talk and we, we get together and we have fun and it's in the dating life or else you wouldn't have got married. You had it in that dating life. But when you get married, some people lose all the adventure and all the fun. And listen, guys, I mean, you used to put a lot of fun, you used to put a lot of time and effort into the dating experience, the having fun, and we made a commitment to continue that after the married life. But so often, so often, men, we pursue a woman, men, before we get married. But then we get married, and then we start pursuing other things. Why is that? Because men are hunters. Men like to conquer, to kill, to win, to achieve. It's, it's, it's like, you know, when you go out and you shoot a deer, a guy goes and shoots a deer, and what do you do? Oh, you shoot deer, I killed deer. And you get that deer, and you stuff that deer, and you put it on the wall, and you say, yes, let's go kill something else. And that's what a, that's what a guy does. And so that's the way a lot of men treat their marriage. They, they go, marriage, yes, yes, I've done marriage. And you take that woman home, you stuff her, put her on her you yes, yes, <laughs> let's go conquer something else. And I'm telling you, it ain't working. Guys, I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's not, that way it's just not, it's not working. And a lot of you, I, I would say this, you guys, it's, fun is not a luxury for your marriage. That's a myth. Fun is not a luxury for your marriage. It is a necessity of your marriage. Some say, I don't have time to have fun. You don't have time not to have fun. Because if you don't start having fun, you, will, you, won't, you might not have a marriage to fight for. This is an important ingredient in your mess. So here's what I want to do. I, I want to give you three types of fun that every couple must have. You, every couple needs to have these three types of fun. And just for the record, I think these are funny. 
these points. Some of you may think they're cheesy, but you're going to remember them, okay? Here they are. Uh, the first type of fun every married couple needs to have. Write them down, you guys. Number one is face-to-face fun. Everybody say that. Face-to-face fun. That's when we get together and we just enjoy each other's company. Face-to-face. Because so often in dating, we can talk, 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 talk. Talk, 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 And we text and text and text and text and text and text and I, and, and I don't know about you, but when I was dating my wife, we would talk for hours on the phone. I'd stay up till 2 a.m. talking to her. And then when we didn't have anything more to say, we just listened to each other breathe. <laughs> you still there? Yeah. <laughs> right? And then you just talk, talk, talk. And then, and then you get married. And then all the face-to-face time ends and it just becomes business time who are you gonna go get the kids i'm gonna okay i'll do the soccer and then you got to get that and make sure make sure you go pick up that oh my gosh the, 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 we're out of milk again can you and then and then air conditioner broke again and then and then and there's just like business transactions and we've stopped having the face-to-face intimate time together and i'm telling you it's not working it is killing your marriage by not having face-to-face fun anymore. And what I want to do is I want to show you three different portions of scripture. Um, from it's, it's an ex, it's Solomon and the Shulamite woman from the song of Solomon, just their interaction, their relationship. If you've never read the song of Solomon, you're in for a treat today. It's a very beautiful, poetic, um, portion of scripture. But the first one here, um, it, it really, it really shows the three types of fun and how it escalates this. It just grows. Their relationship grows, grows, grows through the three phases of fun that you need to have. This first one here starts off in chapter seven, um, verse one through four. And just watch here how Solomon compliments this girl. And he, he starts, he starts at the feet and he just works his way all the way up her face. And she's just buttering his hands at the end, man. She is his at the end of this. Just check it out. You guys should take notes. I'm just telling you. Song of Solomon, chapter 7. How beautiful your sandal feet, O prince's daughter. Your graceful legs are like jewels, the work of a craftsman's hands. Your navel is a rounded goblet that never lacks blended wine. I don't understand that part. <laughs> you know, because if I try that on my, she'd be like, you call me fat? Would you call me drunk and fat? What you doing? You know, a goblet, though. I don't know. Apparently, it worked for her, though. It was working, man. Your waist is a mound of wheat encircled by lilies. Your breasts are like two fawns, twins of a gazelle. Evidently, he was really excited that there were two of them and that there were twins that were both there together. Now, I, I, have, like, I have like 14 jokes I could insert right here, you guys. But because I'm maturing in the things of God, I will not say them right now. But if you catch me later and I'm alone... You can ask me, because they are funny. Uh, because your breasts, there, oh, there's two of them. Yes, uh, your neck is like an ivory tower. Your eyes are the pools of Heshbon by the gate of Bath Rabim. So what's he doing here? He's just talking intimately. He's having some face-to-face intimate time. What, and what's he doing? He's giving her the details. Men, say details with me. One, two, three. Yeah. Men like headlines. Women like what? Yeah, the women like the deeds. It's like a talk, a talk, a talk, a talk about things you don't care nothing about and go on and on and on and on and on. It's just the way they, that's why. I, but it's so important. It's so important because your relationship works best when you have that intimate face to face, ongoing conversation. And you got to guard it and you got to protect this face to face time or else I'm telling you, life will squeeze the fun out of your marriage. The face-to-face fun, it happens to us all. My wife and I, when we started having kids, we made the big mistake of just, of of, of saying, you know what, we can just have fun with our kids. We can just include the kids in our our life and have fun. And just, we'll just, and and without knowing it, we realized eventually that we surrendered one of the best parts of our marriage. That we needed to have guarded, face-to-face, intimate time together or else, I'm telling you, it'll suffer. It will suffer. And let me just say for the record, driving your kids to their activity talking together or, you know, while you're watching your TV show or sitting down together while you're both on your phones and stuff like that does not count. That is not, I'm talking about faithful, consistent, guarded, face-to-face time. This is the, the first type of fun that your marriage needs. It just needs it. Here's the second thing that we need. 
Um, we need, in our marriages, the second kind of fun, we're just progressing here, and that is the side-to-side fun. Everybody say side-to-side. That's where you go hang out with your best friend. That's where you're just, you're doing something you enjoy with your wife. You're doing something you enjoy with your husband. It's enjoying some time together doing like a common activity. Look at, as we continue in verse 11, the Shulamite women now responding to Solomon. Come, my lover, let us go to the countryside. Let us spend the night in the villages. In other words, she says, let's have a weekend getaway. Let's go shopping. Let's go on a shop. Let's, let, let someone else watch the kids. Let's just get away together and have some fun. Now, just as women generally, typically, they crave the face-to-face time, men generally crave side-to-side time, where you're just hanging out, doing something that they enjoy together. It just makes a man feel valued. It's fun. He sees you as his very best friend. And it just is, is a, it's incredibly bonding for both the man and the woman when you experience that. But it's especially true for the men. I don't know what it is. Maybe he likes golfing and you go, uh, golf is so boring though. Get, look, listen, women, get into his world. Step into his world and do some things that he loves. Maybe it's hunting and you go, oh, you go hunting. I'll go over here. Every now and then, just, it, would, it would be better if you had some side-to-side time where you're stepping into his world. And I don't know what that is. Maybe it's board games. Maybe it's a card game. Maybe it's, I don't know, but every, you need to step. And listen, you, same thing for you men. Men, you need to step into her world and do some things that she loves and get outside of yourself. My wife loves, she likes shopping. I can't stand shopping, but I go shopping I, I can only stand so much of it, I really, but I try my best. And I go, but I go, and I'll hold her hand in that mall, and, and, and we're walking together, and I hold her hand for two reasons. One, because I love her. She's my woman, all right? And, and two, because if I let go, she goes shopping and buys stuff. <laughs> That's a good trick for you men. Grab that hand. Hold that woman tight. <laughs> but you need to step into, you need to step into each other's world. I'll sit down and watch a, a, sh- a show I would rather not watch, okay? It's her show. I'll sit down and watch it with her. I'll, I'll, do, I'll go to the co-ed baby shower. When did that become a thing? You know what I mean? But I'll do it. I'll do it. Okay, baby. Okay. And I'm there with you. I'm going to do it with a, a smile as best as I can. And here's the thing. Ladies, you want your men to open up, don't you? Any ladies want your men to open up? You want your men to open up? Let me give you a secret. There's two times that your men is, is most... Uh, willing to open up. You should take some notes. I'm going to give it to you. Here's number one. When he's doing something with you, he enjoys. And the second one is, right after he's done something with you, he enjoys. <laughs> he's he's going to open up, which leads me to my third point in just a moment here. But I'm telling you, this is good preaching. I don't know how you're containing yourselves right now in this powerful, <laughs> fun stuff. Three types of fun every couple needs to have. Let's say them out loud together. What was the first type? Face to face. What was the second type? Side to side. Are you ready for the third one? Write it down this way. Belly button to belly button. Come on now. Isn't that clever? Write that down and say amen. Come on. (laughs) You're going to remember that. Let me break this one down. Belly button to belly button. Verse 11 and 12 of chapter 7. Watch this. The Shulamite woman says to Solomon, she says, come, my lover, let's go to the countryside. Let's spend the night in the villages. Let's go early to the vineyards to see if the vines have budded. I'm getting all choked up. This is so so powerful. No. I'm getting to the fun part, though. If their blossoms have opened and if the pomegranates are in bloom, what does she say? There I will give you my love. What does she say? Translate that into modern day language. She said, hey, let's go have sex in the park. That's what she said. That's what she said. No, that's what she said, really. That's what she said right there. Now, don't you go having sex in the park. You get arrested for that, okay? Unless you find a really secluded park or something, really private. Just don't blame it on me. She said, let's go have some belly button to belly button time. Let's go, let's go have some romantic, physical fun. You say, what, well, does God like that? Does God, yeah, absolutely God's like that. God loves it. He created it. Listen, when it comes to sex, God's way is not just right, it is better. It's better God's way. 
I'll prove it to you. Look at this Proverbs, this next one, Proverbs chapter 5. May your fountain be blessed, and may you rejoice in the wife of your youth. Like, be married 30, 40, 50 years. God loves it. Enjoy this woman that you married when you were young. A loving doe, a graceful deer. Watch this. May her breast satisfy you always. This is the word of God. And may he add his blessing to the reading of his word. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. (laughs) Some of you ain't, ain't smiling, man. This is the word of God here. This is good, powerful stuff. May her breast satisfy you always. May you ever be captivated by her love. And that Hebrew word that was translated captivated is actually the word sugar. Can you say sugar? Say it with some attitude. Don't work. Sugar. Now say, give me some sugar. All right, that's okay. So literally this word was used for when an animal would attack another animal, kill it, and eat it. Wow. He said, may your love be that kind of sugar. <laughs> well, later on today, you need, to, you need to give me some sugar, baby. <laughs> with, the, with the eyes of a lion. Like you're about to, uh. <laughs> All right, let me give you some advice here. Because I really believe that, that one of the most healthiest things that you can do for your marriage for your, for your marriage, one of the most healthiest things you can do is have a, a healthy, physical romance life. It really is. There is nothing that compares to a healthy, physical romance life. It, 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 it does so when, when you don't have it, there's so many stressors and things that happen. So let me give some advice to the men and the women separately. Men, let me talk to you alone for a moment, okay? Men, work on your approach. Just vary your approach a little bit. Be creative in your approach. Be tender in your approach. Be loving in your approach. Quit doing the same approach every time. Hey, baby, you want some of this? <laughs> I, know, I know you do. And you get out of the shower. Hey, check it out, baby. I know, I know. And then just look, just be tender, be loving, work on the approach, man. Come on, like give a back rub, bring some flowers home, some chocolates, have some face-to-face time and woo her a little bit, like very, be tender. Because you know, women, your husband can sexualize everything, huh? Everything, everything. Honey, can you get me a bowl of cereal? Absolutely, I can. I'll get you a bowl of cereal and I'll get you a spoon too, stir you up real good. Everything. I could go all day, I bet you. We could just take stuff, and I could just go all day. All day. Honey, you need to change the oil. No, that's too easy. (laughs) Just be loving, dude. Be tender, 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 tender. Vary it, vary it. Be creative, okay? Ladies, ladies, let me give you some advice, ladies, okay? Just alone time, okay? Let's have some girl talk. Here's my advice to you. Just make an approach. Any approach, just an approach, okay? Any approach will do. Hey, honey, come get some of this. That works. It doesn't work for him going that way, but that works all day for him, all day, all day. And it will never fail. That will never fail. (laughs) And I'm telling you, it doesn't matter what you got, whatever you got, it it looks better in silk than it does in sweats. (laughs) Just so just... Get rid of them things, you know what I'm saying? And work, just make an approach, you know, draw the bath or something. Turn down the lights, get a candle, put on some Marvin Gaye and say, let's get it on. You know what I'm saying? Just any approach. And then, but some of you, don't get uncomfortable on me now. Come on, we're good. This is good stuff. Some of you think like, okay, um, but what about our kids? We can't because we have kids and they're this and that. No, 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 that's no excuse. That is no excuse, man. You need to put on door of the Explorer, put them in their room, go run to your room, lock the door, and say, honey, quick, we got 30 minutes. Go, Diego, go. <laughs> Vamanos. Come on, somebody. Have some fun. Have some fun. Have some fun in your marriage. You guys believe you can have fun in church? Is this a, if you don't, you're in the wrong church. I'm just telling you right now. The offering better be good today. So here's the thing. We're going to have a lot of baby dedications in about nine months. <laughs> we're going to need that new land and new building, man. We're, we're raising and multiplying the kingdom of God. Let me get serious for just a moment with you guys because 
I get the question a lot, and I even got it at Unity, that the question of like, okay, I understand that, but how do I get back there? Because our marriage has lost so much. Like the fire is gone. The, 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 the fuego, the, 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 just the gusto, the, it's, just, it's just gone. How do we get that? We haven't, we, we, so we've sacrificed so much. Like we haven't had face-to-face time. I never get into his world. I don't even want to get into his world. And she don't get in, we just don't want to. So the, the romance part, the physical part is just a duty now. It just, it, we're, we're missing. So how do we get back to that place? I understand it, but there's, it seems like there's a, a gap. Let me give you some advice. There's a, there's, Jesus told the church in Revelation. It, he's telling the church this, the advice of how do you get back to that place spiritually? in love with Jesus, I, I have found that it's the, same, it's the same recipe. It's the same thing when you're trying to get back into that place in your marriage. Revelation chapter 2, verse 5 says, remember the height from which you've fallen. Don't you remember when you used to talk? You used to talk. You used to enjoy each other's company so much. You used to get into her world without complaining. Don't you remember that when you just did it because you, you just loved her? And it wasn't about you. It was not about you, so you did it. And don't you remember, wife, when you just, you get into his world and you did it without complaining or arguing or putting up the fight. You just did it because it wasn't about you. You just wanted to love him and see him smile and see him happy. Don't you remember that? He says, remember how far you've fallen. Repent and do the things you did at first. Do you want what you once had in marriage? then do the things that you once did. Let me say that again. Do you want what you once had in marriage? Then do the things that you once did. See, when we're in that dry place, we can so often just just start looking over the fence, (laughs) looking at other people's yards and other people's relationships, and, and, and oh, look at the grass is so greener on the other side of the fence there. Oh, if I had that, and if I had that, because, I mean, there's so much going on in our life, and our, it's just sucking the, the fun out, sucking the intimacy out. There's so much, oh, if I, and, and, and instead of just focusing on your own lawn, because the grass isn't greener over there. No, 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 the grass is greener wherever you water it. It's green wherever you water it. So we need to start taking care of our relationships, taking care of our house, our home, our marriages. Again, because here's your last feeling, because choices lead. And feelings follow. So you don't wait for the spark to come back. You don't, when, when, the, when the fire is going out on the log and you got that fireplace, when it's going out, you don't just wait for the fire to start back again. No, no, no. You go get a log and you put it back on the fire. Because choices lead. And the feelings follow. And some of you just need to start making the choice to reignite your face-to-face fun. Your side-to-side fun, your, your romance, belly button to belly button, fun. And make the choice today. Choices lead, feelings follow. Let's bow our heads just with that all across this worship center. And let me start here with, with some of you that are here. There is a scripture that we just read, Revelation 2, 5, that says, repent and do the things you did at first. Repent. And that word may, may sound like a biblical or a religious word to some of you. But can I, that word right there just means change your mind and direction. That's all that means. With every head bowed and eye closed, maybe you're here. And I know I'm going to pray for marriages in just a moment. And we need to make a decision and some commitments. But the first decision, the first commitment you have to make is to change your direction. Is to work on God being your source of life. And maybe you're here today and you find yourself going in the wrong direction. Maybe, maybe you had at one point a close and intimate relationship with God. But now you feel like it's just so much space and expanse. Maybe you've never had that. Today, can I encourage you, change your mind and change your direction. The Bible says that if we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord, and we believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, then you shall be saved. Doesn't matter what you've done. Doesn't matter how many times you've done it. Doesn't matter how recent you've done it. You will be saved if you change your mind and change your direction. So with every head bowed and eye closed, can I give you that opportunity right now to confess Jesus as your Lord, to surrender your life to him, to change your mind and change your direction and start pursuing God, the source of your life. And whether you've, maybe you've done that before and you just need to turn around and do it again. You need to do the things you once did. Or maybe you've never done it. Today's the day. 
to change your mind, change your direction. I want to pray for you right where you're seated. I'm not going to call you up to the front. I'm not going to single you out. But I want to pray that prayer. I want to pray a prayer of surrender, of salvation today, right where you're seated. If that's you, with every head bowed and eye closed, go ahead and lift up your hand and lift it high and say, Pastor, will you pray for me? Keep it up. Yeah, amen, 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 amen. Come on, yes, yes. Praise God. Thanks for joining us online. If you want to learn more about our church, then follow us on social media or visit our website at www.ilovediscovery.church. Don't forget to tune in next week for part four of our series, As Long As We Both Shall Live.